Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and it might be a little bit early to talk about this, but this is something I've been sort of noticing with DDR5 overclocking in, in my testing, and you can also sort of see it from the ma motherboard manufacturer QVLs, and uh, basically I think DDR5 should come with one DIMM per channel uh, memory topologies as standard rather than daisy chains or T topologies or literally anything with more than one memory stick per channel. And the reason for this is that unlike with DDR4, where there is a difference between a one DIMM per channel and like a really strong daisy chain, it's just not really that big. Um, on DDR5, however, there's a difference going from like a six layer daisy chain to an eight layer daisy chain, and that's already a pretty substantial difference. And then there's a similar size difference going from an eight layer daisy chain to a uh, one DIMM per channel on eight or 10 layers. Um, I'm not aware of any six layer one DIMM per channel boards right now, um, which I think would be really interesting because uh, generally speaking, going from, uh, well, I, if I had to guess, I would assume a six layer board with one DIMM per channel would outperform an eight layer daisy chain. Uh, that's just a suspicion I have. I don't have any evidence for that, but I, I, I would like on, on DDR4, it kind of worked like that. Um, though on DDR4, an 8-layer daisy chain didn't really perform any different than a 6-layer daisy chain, so, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, but it's a suspicion I have. Anyway, so, yeah, um, the differences in terms of what I've been experiencing has been basically, you know, one DIMM per channel motherboards like the Unify X and the Gigabyte Z690 or Astachyon. Uh, these will easily do like 6,800 megabits per second, um, and as in like they'll boot that. If you actually want to get it fully stable, that's a whole different matter. But the thing is, on the 8-layer daisy chain motherboards, I've not been able to post more than 6,400 megabits per second. So, you know, talking about how like, oh, you'll eventually be able to dial, it doesn't even boot. Right, like on a on a tachyon, I can boot sixty eight hundred megabits per second, and then if you fiddled with in a, with it for long enough, I would assume you would eventually get it to to pass very, all the different stress tests. But with a eight layer daisy chain motherboard, uh, it won't even post. Right, so there's no like, oh, you just have to dial the settings in. It's kind of like, nah, it doesn't turn on, a kind of situation. Um, and, uh, well, I've not had that much success with the Apex yet, but the Apex seems to just behave very differently in terms of memory overclocking compared to the Tachyon and the Unify X, and even the 4DIM uh, motherboards from MSI and Gigabyte, just in terms of the voltages that you use. Um, yeah, apparently on, on the Asus boards, you're not supposed to, like, for some reason, the, the way the Asus BIOS works, it doesn't seem to play super well if you like copy the voltage settings off of a gigabyte board or an MSI motherboard and put them on an Asus board that doesn't seem to work so far so um yeah I'm not like I'm, I don't don't want to judge too much the the APAT like I, I don't really have a lot of like I basically I've been struck like there are screenshots of the Apex doing similar settings to what I can do on a Tachyon I've just not been able to replicate those screenshots so um Anyway, um, but the Apex QVL goes up to 6400, which is a bit low, and especially Asus QVLs right now are a bit weird, because, like, they, they apparently have four DIMM boards doing 6800, which, uh, I, I tried asking a few people if this is actually real, and, uh, this sounds like the QVL is just wrong right now, like, this, this doesn't work, um. 6400 should be the limit for a daisy chain board. And the cheapest daisy chain motherboard that Asus makes tops out at 6000, which pretty much matches my experience. Yeah, a six layer daisy chain should top out at around 6000. Uh, the same is true for like a six layer ASRock daisy chain, right? Tops out at 6000 according to the QVL. Uh, gigabyte six layer motherboard, QVL goes up to 6200. And it's like, I've technically seen that boot, but I wouldn't like, it's not great. It's not a. This, this is not something that just works. 6,000, on the other hand, does mostly just kind of work. 6,200 is like you have to get lucky. Um, and then you get to like the eight layer daisy chain boards like the Master um, and the Tai Chi, uh, which I don't have a Tai Chi, but the thing is I, I'm not suspicious of 6,400 because every single eight layer daisy chain motherboard I've tried does do 6,400. So that, that just seems like, yep, that should work. Um, and the, the master is uh, QVL'd up to 6400 in line with my expectations. The extreme uh, is QVL'd up to 6600, but I think there's something weird going on here because that is so much voltage for DDR5. Like, that is an absolute ton of voltage for DDR5. So, 
um, I, I get the sneaking suspicion that you, the, the, this, yeah, this, I, I don't know that I would necessarily try to d replicate those results, but I, I might have to, like, retest the extreme a bit because, uh, yeah, I've not been hitting my memory sticks with uh, this much voltage for, like, full stability. Um, that's quite a bit. Um, anyway, the Tachyon, as I mentioned earlier, 6800. Now, MSI's QVLs are the most optimistic. I've, admittedly, I've not tested a Tomahawk. And so this is a six layer daisy chain, and this is QVL'd up to 6400. Uh, then there's the carbon, which is QVL'd up to 6600. The carbon is an eight layer daisy chain, which should be the same topology as the, like it should be the exact same eight layer daisy chain as what you get on the ACE. And the QVL seemingly confirms that because this is also QVL'd up to 6666, same as the carbon. However, uh, when I still had the carbon, I already had to return it. Um, I couldn't get it over 6400, so I'm kind of, like, I, I kind of, so, yeah, th th I'm not, not sold on the idea that this board does 6666, um, but, uh, yeah, so that's sort of my experience with DDR5 overclocking so far, is just sort of 6-layer daisy chain, probably around 6000, 8-layer daisy chain, around 6400, uh, 1 dim per channel, 6800, easy, and so that's quite a gap. Um, and then the other thing is, one DIM per channel, like, the, the, well, the main argument against one DIM per channel motherboards is you can't have four sticks of RAM. But the only reason to have four sticks of RAM is if you need a ton of memory capacity, right? And DDR5 is incredibly dense, right? The smallest proper DDR5 memory stick you can buy is 16 gigs. And I, I do know 8 gig sticks exist, but those use X16 memory chips. So they're not proper memory sticks, they're terrible. Uh, <laughs> please do not buy 8 gig DDR5 sticks. So based on that, so basically the minimum amount of memory you can have on a, uh, on a Z690 motherboard is 32 gigs of memory, right? If you're gonna use both memory channels, your minimum is 32 gigs. And that's a lot of RAM, right? And also, we already have 32 gig DIMMs, so if you get a one DIMM per channel motherboard like a Unify X, like you can stick 64 gigs of this, uh, 64 gigs of RAM into this just fine. Um, and uh, like, so I really don't know why you'd want a four DIMM DDR5 motherboard. It's bad for overclocking. You probably don't need 64 gigs of uh, no, and you probably don't need 128 gigs of RAM because again, you can get 64 gigs of RAM onto a one DIM per channel. You can't like the only thing you can't do on a one DIM per channel right now is 128 gigs. And I'm sure in the future that'll be possible because SK Hynix already announced 24 gigabit uh, DDR5 chips, so we will be seeing like 24 gig memory sticks sometime in the future. Uh, then 48 gig sticks will also be a thing in, in the future. And then, of course, 64 gig sticks will also inevitably be a thing for DDR5. So I really, really, really don't get why you would want a 4 dim DDR5 motherboard unless you're building some kind of like video editing workstation where more RAM is more better even though the RAM runs at incredibly low speeds because that's the other part of this. Uh, if you actually look at the memory support for those four DIMM configurations, oh look, it sucks. <laughs> right, like it's mostly, um, okay, man, MSI's QVL is quite extensive here. Uh, Wait, do they know QVL anything higher than 4800? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. It actually is just up to 4800. See, I thought they would have managed to QVL at least a single set of like 5200 uh, in, in a 4x16 configuration, but to be fair, like I've messed with 4x16 a bit. I do have some, some like I have four sticks of Micron uh, a, uh, Revision A, and, uh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> like, you go, you get four sticks of memory, regardless of what motherboard you're on, it's just pure pain, is what it is. Um, like, the boards, the thing is, the boards don't even, so those sticks are JDEC 4800 megabits per second. Um, when you boot up initially, the boards boot at 4533, because the memory controller isn't able to, like, like, the memory controller doesn't even default to 4800 if you have four memory sticks. Um, so, like, yeah, just why would you, like, so basically, it's like, yeah, you can, you can have a, you know, motherboard with four DIMM slots, just don't actually ever try to use them, because that is going to suck. Um, the ASRock board is an even better example of this, right, because 
This is a two by four ally. So this is they they've you know saw uh like so forty eight hundred on four sticks, uh forty eight hundred on four sticks and forty eight hundred on four sticks. But if you actually wanted to run, um you know and notice that these are all so these are like eight gig dims. Uh, these are 16 gig dims. These are 16 gig dims. So at this point, you might be so basically, if you're going to run four memory sti four 16 gig memory sticks on this motherboard in order to get a total memory capacity of 64 gigabytes, you're stuck at 4800. But that's not actually the the speed limit for this motherboard for 32 gigs of RAM. Because if you're a sensible person and buy your you know proper 32 gig dims instead of trying to shove four 16 gig dims onto a motherboard like onto DDR5, which um, you can actually do 5200, which I'm pretty sure is not so much a limitation of a motherboard of the motherboard so much as it is a limitation of the XMP of Micron, you know, revision A memory chips. They generally do not get used for XMPs rated higher than 5200. Um, so there's probably like there there might be like headroom for like 5400 on that setup right there. Um, well, maybe not with this motherboard, but because again, you know, uh, well actually. Maybe there is. Like, you might might be able to get 5400 working on, on 2x32. You will, but, you know, you, you'll probably be stuck at, like, 4800 for two by, uh, for 4x16. Um, and so on a board like this, it's just, like, you're not supposed to use those dim slots, as far as I'm concerned. Like, they're just kind of there to, like... Like, you're not supposed to use them, as far as I'm concerned. Like, they shouldn't even be there, in my opinion. And also, if this board... Instead of, you know, having two DIMM slots that you're never supposed to use, because if you do try to use them, the memory, or, like, the memory is going to just be stuck at pathetically low speeds. Um, you're, like, you're going to be in DDR4 territory. Um, like, if they ditch those unnecessary DIMM slots, you, I would imagine that it would significantly help with you know, memory overclocking on 2x16 and 2x32 configurations. So instead of having a QVL that stops at 6,000, it might stop at, I don't know, 6,400 or something, if you just ditched the extra DIMM slots. Um, but of course, we can't have that, because the average, most people buying motherboards think they're going to build a workstation with 256 gigs of RAM, um, right, or 128 gigs of RAM, which is just completely freaking stupid. Um... Like the night, like the RAM is simple. You either have enough RAM or you don't, right? And if you have enough RAM, the only thing that matters at that past that point is having the fastest RAM, right? So, like if you use an application that needs 10 gigs of RAM, having 64 gigs of RAM isn't going to make it faster. If anything, most of the time it's going to make it slower because running 64 gigs of RAM at like high speeds is extremely difficult, be that on DDR4 or DDR5. Um, so, yeah, and, and with DDR5, with the, you know, higher density, the fact that the, the DDR5 memory, like, is DDR5 is more sensitive to the memory topology of the motherboard than ever before, it's just kind of like, why are we doing four DIMMs as standard, right? Like, I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense for, like, a workstation motherboard to have four DIMM slots. It does. It's just that, like, the standard, you know, gaming motherboard doesn't need four freaking dim slots, right? Like, it just... Why would you have four dim slots on this? Um, I admit, mean, this doesn't have gaming in the name. Does this have gaming in the... Oh, it doesn't have gaming in the name. That's a shame. Um, not really a gaming motherboard, I guess. Um, there's not a DDR5 tough gaming, is there? Yeah, I don't think there is right now. But... Yeah, so so that's my uh, so basically that's my thoughts on on DDR5 memory topologies right now is that every th like four DIM memory configurations are are dumb. Um, they're barely functional, right? So if we look at four DIM support from Gigabyte, it's it's a bit better, I think. Yeah, they've actually managed to QVL a single. Wait, that's no, it's one RX8. Yeah, sixteen gig DIMs. Yeah, so uh, Gigabyte managed to QVL a fifty two hundred on the Aorus Extreme, um, and I also on the Master. Yeah. So they managed to QVL a single 5200, but if you get the Aorus Pro and try to run that memory, many memory sticks on it, oh, they still manage 5200. Uh, wait. Native speed of 4000. <laughs> wait a minute, what's going on with that? Th wait, does that mean that, like, I'm assuming it defaults to 4000, which would sort of match what, what tends to happen. Wait, does... I need to check something, then. Native... 
four thousand as well. That's interesting because I've like when I've been testing four by sixteen configurations, it defaults to forty five thirty three, not four thousand. So that's a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe they changed something in in the BIOS versions, but anyway, like my point is, four DIM Z six ninety boards are dumb. I mean, yeah, four no four DIM DDR five boards are dumb. There, that's my point. Like, the, the sticks have really high capacities, and they hate, and, and because they run at such incredibly high speeds, they're really, really sensitive to the memory topology. And extra dim slots is probably one of the worst things you can do to memory overclocking. Um, now, the funny thing is, on DDR4, it wasn't really that big a deal. On DDR3, it was even less of a, you know, it made even less difference having one DIM versus two DIMs per channel. But with DDR5, like, the memory speeds are now so high that really having those extra DIM slots is just, like, it, it's just detrimental, um, in my opinion. And you really just shouldn't be using them, ever. Um, actually, I wonder what MSI QV all on the carbon for uh, four DIM configurations. And that's the last four dim, and yeah, also just up to 4,800. Yep, I'm, I'm not seeing a single more than 4,800 on, on four sticks on here, so, like, so Gigabyte seems to currently have pretty decent four dim support. Um, can I do four memory sticks on this? Four by 16, let's see, uh, on the dash P. Mm, yes, this, this, see? <laughs> And and if you tried to run four thirty two gig dims, oh actually that I don't think that's even supported at all. It's like yeah, if you tried to put four thirty two gig dims in the motherboard, it's just not gonna even post. <laughs> it's not even gonna boot on auto. Um, so that that's great. So yeah, DDR five. I like the. the let's see what what the dash A has for four by sixteen. Oh that yeah okay. I really think this QVL just isn't finished because this this isn't. They, they don't have anything rated above 4,400. So that's great, isn't it? Meanwhile, if you look at 2x32, you actually have support for 5,200. With this board, I would assume it's the same. I said 2 by 3 Wait, what? What the hell is this? Are you kidding me? Like, where's 2 by 32 Okay, well, let's try the Apex then. Man, Asus did something to their website, and now it just does this constantly. Okay, so Asus QVLs are just not finished currently, as far as I can tell. Yes, this is this is great. This is a good website design right here. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess we could also t check out the, the Tai Chi. So if we go dim slot support... Oh, look, the, the Tai Chi doesn't do more than 4800 on four dims. Like, why? Why do you even have the dim slots then? What are the... like? Well, I guess, I guess it makes sense when most people don't even remember to enable XMP, but just, no, th this is, like, I think the default, like, like I said, I think the default number of DIMM slots on a, or more like the default memory topology for a Z690 motherboard should be, you know, something like a Tachyon. Not literally a Tachyon, because this is a 10-layer PCB, and, you know, you're not going to build a $200 board with a 10-layer PCB, uh, unless you, like, remove all other functionality from the motherboard it would be like a socket m the absolute bare minimum to get the cpu to turn on a pcie slot and then the dim slots and that's it i guess there'd also be a chipset somewhere but the chips is like 50 bucks so um yeah like yeah i don't think you'd be able to get a 10 layer 200 dollar board but you know the unify x is an eight layer pcb um and, you know, you could certainly do, like, a six-layer version of this, I think. And that would just... That would probably um, absolutely demolish, you know, a board like an Aorus Pro or a Z690-P or a Phantom Gaming when it comes to memory clock support. Um, so, yeah. And the only thing you'd lose out on is the ability to run 128 gigs of RAM, which you can't really do anyway because it's not supported by any of these motherboards currently. Right? Like, that, that's that's the real kicker, in my opinion, is just like, but you can't run 432 gig DIMMs anyway. Like, that's not supported currently on any motherboard from what I've seen. There's a decent chance it might never work. So you really got to ask yourself, why are there four DIMM slots if you're not supposed to use them? 
So, anyway, that's it for the video. Um, went way longer than I figured it should be, but hopefully it gets the point across. One DIM per channel for DDR5, like, should be default for DDR5. And I'm honestly kind of tempted to do some experiments with removing DIM slots from some of the motherboards that I have. Um, maybe one of the eight-layer daisy chain boards from Gigabyte remove because I have two of those and they use the same topology so if I remove the like I'll have an A and B comparison uh test available um so yeah that might might be something I try just remove the dim like because even just physically like the the problem with the unpopulated dim slots is just that they exist like the actual pins from those dim slots is what causes some of the single signal integrity issues um you know, like, obviously there's a benefit to being able to really optimize the positioning of the DIM slots with a one DIM per channel topology like you get on the Unify X um, or on the Tachyon, right? But there, then there's also just the fact that um, not having, like, f the, the DIM slots themselves are a source of uh, just, I think the main problem they cause is reflections because you basically have... Uh, unterminated pins hanging off of your your you know data lines um which causes issues when you're shoving you know six thousand like six thousand plus megabits per second uh th down those down those traces so yeah um there that's actually it for the video um so i guess uh thanks for watching like share subscribe leave any comments questions suggestions down in the comments section below and if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd uh, check them out. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.